Hi guys, it's just turning into another uh, hot, windy, red flag, wildfire warning kind of day here in the great state of Texas where it is now, uh, it is Good Friday, Good Friday, which would be Friday, April 15th, 2022, so I guess while at least folks here in the U.S. are cowering in terror from uh, the good old IRS. Uh, we're going to be doing what we do every Friday to the best of my ability and that is uh, bringing you my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I uh, check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com for their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe while trying to dodge the hopium. Uh, I feel like Manga Bay is just getting a little more apocaloptimistic. Uh, so first you have to wade through three hopium stories and then we finally get to some reality. <clears throat> Global biodiversity is in crisis, but how bad is it? How bad is the global biodiversity crisis? I guess I, I need to send Rhett Butler this shirt so he can answer the question, how bad is the global biodiversity crisis? <clears throat> biodiversity has been defined as one of nine planetary boundaries that help regulate our planet's operating system. But humanity is crossing those boundaries, threatening life on Earth. The big question, the big question, where precisely is the threshold of environmental change that biodiversity can stand before it is destabilized and collapses planet-wide. This is the big question. At what point do we throw in the towel and admit, stick a fork in us, sorry, we're done. <clears throat> this is the question. <clears throat> the planetary boundary for biodiversity loss was initially measured by extinction rates, but this, as well as other measurements, have proved to be insufficient in determining this global threshold for biodiversity loss. At present, a worldwide threshold for biodiversity loss, or biosphere integrity as the threshold is known now remains undetermined. Hmm. However, thresholds for biodiversity loss can be clearly defined at local or regional levels when an ecosystem goes through a regime shift, abruptly changing from one stable state to another resulting in drastic changes to biodiversity in the changed ecosystem. While the planetary boundary framework provides one way of understanding biodiversity or biosphere integrity loss, there are many other measures of biodiversity loss and all all point toward the fact that we are continuing to dangerously destabilize life on Earth. Okay, so how can we measure the uh, decline of biosphere integrity? I would uh, highly suggest you open your eyes you open your eyes and you look out your window. Okay, I'm here in the middle of Texas 
on a red flag wildfire warning day in April. And uh, I could probably, if I put my mind to it, could list 100 indicators of biosphere integrity loss from the chair I'm sitting in. And if you really want to see it, get in your damn gas-sucking car. There's a sign right there is, is the existence of your car. Get in your car and drive across Texas or Florida uh, or drive from Florida to Texas and count how many bugs splatter against your windshield driving essentially from Tampa, Florida to Austin, Texas. How many bugs splat on your windshield and just look at how many dead animals you see on the road. As I recall, when there were about one-fourth as many people and one-fourth as many cars in Florida, Florida used to be littered with uh, dead animals in the road. Uh, I think taking a census of road kill whether on the road or windshield kill or two ways, any of us. But really all you got to do is uh, look out your damn window. But anyway. <clears throat> all right, we got more hopium. Okay. Looking in at rewilding. All right, we have a new map of rewilding projects. Okay, a little bit of hopium. I I'm totally with this rewilding thing, so I won't make too much fun of the hopium. So, uh, take this one with a grain of salt. Amazon deforestation dips slightly in March but remains high. Uh, let's see. It does not mention in this little, you know, recap of the research, according to who. My guess is this is according to the, the uh, Brazilian government, I'm assuming. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon amounted to 312 square kilometers in March, a 15% decline over March of 2021. <coughs> Despite the drop for March, deforestation for the first quarter from January 1st to April 1st of 2022 reached 941 square kilometers, the highest level for a first quarter since 2018. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has been trending higher since 2022. There you go, do you think so? Okay, what do you think we're gonna be talking about with an article titled, A Huge Mistake. A Huge Mistake. Uh, take your pick. Which one is a huge mistake? If your uh, answer is deep sea mining, give yourself a, uh, a cobalt star. A huge mistake concerns rise as deep sea mining negotiations progress, the International Seabed Authority, the UN affiliated organization tasked with managing deep sea mining activities, recently held a series of meetings to continue negotiating the development of mining regulations. Of course, nowhere on the UN's table was don't allow it. Okay, that is nowhere in the negotiations to not do it. So, since that is not on the table at the UN, deep sea mining may start as early as 2023 
after the island of Nauru. I could do a whole rant on the island of Nauru triggered a two-year rule embedded in the uh, UN Convention of the Law of the Sea uh, that could allow the sponsored company to start deep sea mining with whatever regulations are currently in place. Yes. Many states, meaning countries, are eager to finalize a set of regulations over the next 15 months. But other countries and delegates have noted the lack of scientific knowledge around deep sea mining, the absence of a financial compensation plan in the event of environmental damage, you know, how much do we pay this coral reef? You know, how much do we pay the whales? Uh, and don't forget ongoing transparency issues and the unlikelihood of finalizing regulatory measures in a short period of time. Yep, yep. Okay, here is how the Amazon Indians are fighting invaders with drone cameras and cell phones. And there you go, video warriors. Alright, we can literally kiss, by, kiss goodbye the last river dolphin in the country of Laos. I did not... Uh, I, I did not realize there was a single uh, river dolphin left in the country of Laos. And now there are no river dolphins in the country of Laos. Yes. Earlier this year, the very last Irrawaddy river dolphin, yes, uh, in Laos became entangled in fishing gear and died. Signif signifying the extinction of the species in Laos. Uh, the uh, subpopulation had dwindled from 17 individuals in 1993 uh, down to zero. Uh, with that loss, there are now just an estimated 89 Irrawaddy dolphins left in the entire Mekong River, all in Cambodia, where they face the same range of threats that wiped out the dolphin in Laos. Yes. Authorities say they are now resolved to strengthen protections and improve public awareness of the dolphin's vulnerability to ensure the species has a future. Yes. Okay. Uh, anyway, we got this complicated article about illegal fishermen plundering waters. Do you think so? Uh, we're having an article about tiger politics. Yes. Uh, tiger politics. I anyway. Um, and then we're looking at landslides in Colombia. Uh, okay, so the, my lead-off uh, article tomorrow is going to be this unadulterated horseshit story. I'm, I'm going to lead off with this story in my Hopium Roundup. So let's just check in with Manga Bay to see how the Hopium uh, addicts at Manga Bay are spinning the single most unadulterated horseshit article I have read, I believe, in 2022. Climate pledges could limit 
warming to two degrees C. Yes, a new study has suggested has suggested that global temperatures can be limited to two degrees C above pre-industrial levels if countries fully meet all of their climate pledges on time. Okay. Uh, so if they don't fully meet all on time. Uh, anyway, we're going to come back to this uh, this story tomorrow. I cannot believe that uh, Rhett Butler is parroting this bullshit. Okay. Who owns the companies destroying rainforest in the heart of New Guinea? Yes, New Guinea home to the world's third largest rainforest, also contains the world's largest planned oil palm plantation, covering 2,800 square kilometers. The uh, proposed oil palm project is nearly the size of Rhode Island. Uh, however, the true owners of the seven concessions that make up the project remain hidden through a shroud of corporate secrecy. Do you think so? Uh, I'm not even sure where Dakar is. Uh, wherever the hell Dakar is. Oh, in Senegal. Yes, you will not believe that in Dakar, Senegal, a forested strip that is one of the last green areas left in Dakar, Senegal, could be raised for new developments under an urban expansion plan. Yes, do you think so? Uh, that's about as shocking as this headline. If you are not aware of this, you are now most biodiversity hotspots in Borneo and Sumatra lack formal protection. A new study published in Animal Conservation finds that most predicted, predicted biodiversity hotspots in Borneo and Sumatra fall outside of formally protected areas. Yes. Uh, Anyway, uh, as if formally protecting, uh, we, I'm not going to get into a protected area rant. Uh, okay, we have some hopium on sustainable fashion. Yes, sustainable fashion. Uh, Lord, here's the latest, you know, the continuing debate about uh, do we make national parks human exclusion zone? Uh, I think we all know my opinion on that debate. Should national parks and other protected areas be human exclusion zones? The entire planet should be a human exclusion zone. All right. Here is some, uh, what in the hell? Conservation groups have slammed the Namibian government's decision to capture 22 wild elephants and export them to zoos in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, they contend the animals were taken from a fragile desert adapted population herd and that splitting up the group this way affects the welfare of both 
the captured elephants and those left behind. Yes, the government denies this and has justified the export as a solution to the human wildlife conflict. Yeah, there you go. There's a solution. You got two choices. You got, okay, you, you have the elephants who have lived there for, you know, probably, what, 20 million years. You have four times as many humans in Namibia as you probably did 30 years ago. And uh, what a surprise that the, uh, the humans moving into the elephant's home are having conflict. What better way to end that conflict than to go in there and just round up the elephants and send them to the United Arab Emirates? Why don't we round up the humans? Wouldn't that work just as well? Uh, it seems to me like you can move a human, you can round up and move a human from Namibia to a zoo in the Middle East a lot easier and quicker than you can to move an elephant. So uh, maybe uh, that's the next step in the plan is to round up the humans and send them off to zoos. Okay. Anyway, kind of along with that, from elephants to bonobos. So as the elephants are going one direction, we have a troop of bonobos uh, taken from the wild, have been returned, probably to end up in the bonobo stew pot. Uh, Yes, uh, this is talking, th th this is somewhat ironic about the scarce supplies and high prices for palm oil in Indonesia. Uh, so, anyway, uh, after failure, Effective conservation requires regular assessments. Yes. Uh, I think we have our regular assessment. Okay. Let's head out to off the coast of Indonesia where we find a stranded coal barge spills cargo, disrupts fishery. An Indonesian coal barge that ran aground off East Java has reportedly spilled much of its cargo and disrupted the local fishery. Yes. Indonesia is one of the world's biggest producers of coal. Yep. But has paid a heavy price for that standing, including the massive deforestation wrought to mine the fossil fuels. Uh, here we have another report, this one from Nepal, about do humans belong in sight of national parks or do they not? We know the answer, uh, but we're going to wind up with a review of activists killed last year. More than half of activists killed in 2021 were land and environment defenders. An analysis by frontline defenders and the Human Rights Defenders Memorial recorded it, well, officially, at least 358 murders of human rights activists globally last year. Of that total, nearly 60% were land, environment, or indigenous rights defenders. The country with the highest death tolls were Colombia, Mexico, 
and Brazil. Advocates say that figure is likely far higher as attacks on land and environment defenders in Africa in Africa often go unreported. Imagine that. Attacks on environmental defenders in Africa going unreported. That, that is sure a shocking headline. But anyway, guys, I've got to wrap this up because uh, now that I have officially tested negative for the corona panic, I have tested negative. I have no fever, and my blood oxygen level is 97 out of uh, 100. Uh, I have been diagnosed as having oak, oak pollen allergies, and uh, I have been cleared to go to yet another picking party. So I gotta wrap up today's ecological meltdown roundup rant and head to a picking party while I still can, and highly advise you to do the same thing while you still can. Bye, guys.